just see him in the spirit and just grab a hold of him that's it the power of God is flowing through you right now Everything that you need is flowing into you right now. Every issue, every burden, every disease, every sickness, every worry.
is so important. We've never done anything like this before. And I believe that God wanted to push us beyond our comfort zone. He wanted to push us into a place where it's not familiar. Because there are some things that we've been carrying that needed a different type of atmosphere to be broken. So however that looks for you, I pray that you would feel safe. That however it looks for you, it's all right. You're like an onion. There are layers. In the center of that onion, there is an identity that God crafted and designed specifically for you. And even before you were born, all of hell has been coming against you to destroy the very core of who you are. Tragedy after tragedy, occurrence after occurrence, fear after fear, doubt after doubt, and it just puts layers on top of the real you. And God allows us these moments to peel off. My sister Kiki sent me a text and the Lord was speaking to her about this time. And the Lord told her that this was an emergency meetup. And I believe it. I believe it. If you could just kind of softly just kind of go to strings. And Josh, if you want to come down and sit for a minute, I appreciate it. Thank you, love. Because we're trying to not create an atmosphere, but we're trying to transfer an atmosphere. We're trying to bring an atmosphere that is already in heaven and bring it here. That's why he pulled us away from everything and for, from everyone to separate us, to bring us to this place. So I really challenge you. I challenge you over these next few days, don't worry about trying to hold back okay because if I have something in my hand and I grip it super hard it's going to take a lot for somebody to pull it out of my hand God is not here to wrestle with you He's not here to wrestle with you. He's not going to throw you down to the ground to pull out of your hands what he wants to take. He is pushing us to come into his presence and say, it's hard to do that it's hard to do that we hold on to things that we don't even realize we're holding on to anger frustration we hold on and God is saying just release it and let it go So I'm trying to be very careful in this moment. 
I'm trying to be very, very, very careful. Holy Spirit. John chapter 8 there's a woman that had an encounter with Jesus <clears throat> and the Bible says in John 8 chapter 3 it says that this woman was caught in adultery. There were religious people that were walking around town trying to find a victim. It may have even been a setup. Because why did they bring her, but they didn't bring him? If she was caught in the act of adultery, that means there was another party. But for some reason, they didn't bring him. When the law of Moses commanded for both of them to be stoned but they just brought the woman. And it was a setup. Ooh. I want you to see yourself in this woman. Maybe you've never committed adultery, but I want you to just look at yourself as a sinful person and put yourself in her shoes. Just pretend that you are her. You were caught in your dirt. And while you were doing your dirt, you got dragged out of the club, you got dragged out of the hotel room, you got dragged out of the car, you got dragged from wherever you were doing whatever you were doing and you were brought literally before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Would you feel ashamed? Would you feel guilt? Would that shame be well-deserved? So they bring this woman to Jesus. But what's funny is, it wasn't even really about the woman. And I heard the Holy Spirit just a few seconds ago say, there are some things that you have been through that are not even really about you. The enemy hates the purpose of God in you so badly that he's been trying to destroy you since the day you cried out for the first time and took your first breath. And some of us take it so personal. Why is my life so hard? Why do I, am I talking to anybody? Why am I always going through? Why is it always a struggle for me? 
and I hear the Holy Spirit saying, some things are not even about you. Some of us just got caught in the line of fire between the enemy thinking that he can still win this. He is ignorant enough to think that he can still win. After Jesus has gone to the grave, after he has gone down to hell, after he snatched the keys, the enemy thinks, if I just take one more soul, if I just destroy one more life, if I just kill one more of his children, like, 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 like he's going to win in the end. And so it's important for us to be able to get an elevated mind. Somebody say an elevated mind. That means we have to come out of low thinking. We have to come out of low thinking. We have to come out of, uh, uh, out of pity thinking. And you've heard me say this before, victim thinking and woe is me thinking and what am I going to do now thinking and all of, all of these negative mindsets that paralyze us in different seasons and you had victory in the last season, but then you come into this season and then it's almost like you're starting all over again, Shamika. We have to learn how to elevate in the spirit and stay there. This is not about elevating in one season and then falling down in the ditch the next season. This is about learning how to elevate and stay elevated. Okay? Stay elevated. We prayed and we fasted for 90 days in the beginning of this year. And now some of you, it's only May. And you dragged yourself in here like you're just at the bottom of this holding pole. The devil is a liar. You are the head and you are not the tail. You are above and you are not beneath. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are a warrior. You are victorious. You are anointed. You are called. You are separated. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are healed. You are prosperous. You are mighty. You are a representative of the kingdom of God on the earth. And see, you should have been shouting by now. If you believe what I'm declaring over you, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and you are not beneath. There is no weapon in hell that is formed against you that will prosper. You will see the victory of God. You will rise up. You will fulfill the call of God on your life. You will walk in purpose. The enemy doesn't know what to do with you. He doesn't know what to do with you. So he attacks your money. He doesn't know what to do with you. So he attacks your kids. He doesn't know what to do with you. So he attacks your spouse. He doesn't know what to do with you. So he attacks your car. He doesn't know what to do with you. So he attacks the people that work with you. He doesn't know what to do with you. And he keeps trying to find a crack. But God has taught us how to release some Holy Ghost plaster. Let me dip in this bucket. Every crack. Every crack. Every crack. Every crack. The blood. 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 The blood of Jesus. The very gates of hell will not prevail against you, woman of God. I want you to say it and I want you to shout it out. The very gates of hell will not prevail against me. The very, come on, open up your mouth, shake yourself. The very gates of hell will not prevail against me. The very gates of hell will not prevail against me. Come on and say it. The very gates of hell will not, shall not, cannot, 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 do not have the ability to prevail against you because you are the bride that he died for. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. He had to pull you and bring you all the way out here into the, into the forest of Georgia to remind you that you are the one. 
You are the one that he died for. You are the one that he loves. You are the one that he cares for. You are the one that he provides for. You are the one that he heals. You are the one that he saves. You are the one that he called before the foundation of the world because when he called Jesus, he knew that you were going to be attached to Jesus. And so you were also mentioned in that moment. Whew. This woman was caught in the very act of adultery. I see myself in her. Unworthy. I see myself in her. Ashamed. I see myself in her. Having a story. That disqualifies me. So the Bible said that they were testing him so that they would be able to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So just imagine the scenario. Maybe the woman just was wrapped in a piece of fabric, half naked thrown in front of Jesus caught in the act of adultery ashamed guilty in a town where I'm sure everybody knew who she was her dirty laundry for everyone to see and she is thrown in front of the king of glory Holy Spirit while there is a crowd of men pointing and accusing so what are you gonna do the law says stoner so what are you gonna do Messiah so what are you gonna do accuser 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 who does that sound like do you know that you still have an accuser who has been working overtime and he sits in your ear to bring accusations I know I'm talking to somebody in this room who do you think you are what are you going down there for nothing's gonna happen it's gonna be the same old thing you are wasting time you're wasting money nobody's even gonna pay attention to you you're not even worthy to be in a, in a room full of women of God because you used to be this and you used to do that. And oh, just last week you cussed somebody out. And who do you think you are? And nothing is going to change for you. Accusations, 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 accusations. But we take them captive in the name of Jesus. Because he told me that there are certain things that are going to be lifted off and broken off and peeled off and my prayer is that this time you never let it get back on you again that you would never let it get back on you again how many of you this is your first time in one of our women events first time I love it I love it hands down I love it so that means that whatever God does for you this time, you're going to get free. You're going to stay free. And then you're going to come back next year with somebody who is bound like you used to be. Because you're going to stay free. And from that place of freedom, somebody say launching pad. This is your launching pad. This is not, oh, I'm going to get free, but then I'm going to soup back down or I'm going to fall back into a pit next month or two months from now. No, this is your launching pad. So you're going to get free and then you're going to go higher and you're going to go higher. But you have to learn how to press and stay in that place. Now, the men are accusing this woman. Jesus stoops down and he's writing on the ground with his finger practically just ignoring them as though he couldn't hear them 
And you know, it's kind of the same thing with God. Like the enemy throws all of these accusations about you before God and nobody's paying attention to him. All of heaven is ignoring him. Did you hear what I just said? The enemy goes before the throne of God to accuse you. The enemy goes before the throne of God to talk dirt about you. The enemy goes before the throne of God to say, look at her. She looks like she's going to quit this time and I'm just going to push her in just the right way so that she will quit. She's going to break this time. I'm going to get her this time. Remember the last time she lost faith? Remember the last time she threw in the towel? I'm going to get her to do it again. And accusing, accusing, accusing. And all of heaven is going on about its business. You know why? Because God believes in you. Jesus. All of heaven believes in you. All of heaven believes that you're going to rise up in your authority. All of heaven believes that you're going to walk out this purpose and this plan that Jesus laid out for you. So they kept asking. So he finally raised himself up, Jesus did, and said to them, famous words, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and continued to write on the ground. than those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one beginning with the oldest even to the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Jesus has ra had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. Watch this. This is so important. And Jesus said to Joanne, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, part of the Trinity, was brought a woman that was caught in the act. It wasn't a rumor. It wasn't maybe she did something. Like literally they, they walked in and it was happening. And they snatched her up out of that bed. She probably didn't even have a moment but to grab the sheets and cover herself and was brought before him. Guilty. And because of who Jesus is, because of his love because of his grace because of his mercy because of his compassion he dealt with the accusers until it was just him and her alone there was nothing left to see no one is getting stoned here today and he asked her a simple question where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? And the answer was no. Watch this. They could not condemn her because they were not sinless. But Jesus was sinless. 
Think about that. If someone had the right to throw the stone, according to the law, if someone had the right to throw the stone, it was Jesus. But Jesus in his love and in his, in his compassion, he threw away his right to extend his grace and his mercy. He says, I don't condemn you. And I just want to remind someone of that tonight. In this relationship that you have with God, he is not your accuser. He is not condemning you. He is not your accuser. And he is not condemning you. And he needs you. He needs you. Not just he wants you, but he needs you to stop condemning yourself. Because Alicia, sometimes other people are not throwing the stones, but because we feel so guilty, we pick up a stone and we throw it at ourselves. Almost like we're trying to earn forgiveness by punishing ourselves. This is not that season. This is not that season. This is not that season. For you, this is the season to believe that the encounter and the relationship that you have with him is real. It is real. And we should not have to keep having encounters with him to deal with the same issue. We should be having encounters with him for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing to go from level to level to level to level. And we always kind of have to start at this first base. And so I heard God saying, shame, broken. Guilt, broken. And for some of you that are listening to me tonight, it's not even it's not even sinful acts that I'm even talking about. There is guilt and there is shame. I hear you, Holy Spirit, thinking that you have disappointed God. Because you feel like you didn't do good enough. You feel like you dropped the ball. You feel like you didn't pray enough. You feel like you didn't fast enough. Who am I talking to? Oh, my God. So we have people in, on different sides of the spectrum. You have the one that's dealing with their past. And then you have the one that's running after God with everything that they have. But then the enemy comes as the accuser in your pursuit, in your seeking God, in your consecration, in your holiness to tell you you're not doing enough. He's a liar. He is a liar. He is a liar. And you got to know how to call him out and confront him. But you can only do that with confidence when you know the one that has the right to throw the stone but doesn't. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He has the right to push me away, but he draws me close. He has the right to reject me, but he accepts me. He has the right to send me to hell over all the things that I've done, but still he forgives me. He made a way for us to be cleansed of all unrighteousness daily, daily, daily. And it's not that we're looking to live in sin. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about people that abuse grace. 
but I know how the enemy's been working. And so I cast down every lying voice in the name of Jesus. Every day, give God your best, period. Every day. Some days you're going to be so broken that your best is going to be 10%. It's not going to be 100. And us religious people will say, God now is taking his hand off of me because I could only give him 10% today in my brokenness. Because I'm trying to run after these kids and I got this little baby and I'm trying to run this business and I'm trying to hold my family together. And God, all I had today was 10%. And the enemy comes as the accuser. And then you begin to feel what? disqualified and then that makes you go from 10% to now your next day is 7% because now on top of the brokenness now you're discouraged I bind all of that in the name of Jesus when you give him your 10% he takes it and strengthens you so that the next day you can give him 12 and the next day you give him 12 and he strengthens you more so that the next day you can give him 15 and guess what he is so committed to this relationship he is so committed to this journey he is so committed to his daughters that he says give me your one percent and i'll turn it into two give me your five percent and i'll turn it into 15 give me your 50 honey i will get you to 100 just keep walking with me and trust that i'm the one that started the work and i'm the one that's going to finish it i just need you to show up is anybody able to just show up do you have enough strength left in you to just show up can you just show up just show up you may not have anything to say but just show up in prayer just show up just show up God here I am here I am to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to me that's all I have God God that's all I have God, I don't have a, a lot of scriptures today, God. I don't, I don't have a whole lot of strength today, God. I don't feel the fire today, God. That's all I have. But here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together. We keep thinking, we keep thinking that God needs us to show up with 100%. We keep thinking that if we don't have 100%, that God just kind of looks at us like the little fish that got caught and throws you back at the ocean. It's time for us to know his character. It's time for us to know who he is. He said to us, I will never. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So you only got 10%. He's still stuck. You're cursing God. He's still with you. You're throwing in the towel, he's still there. You're running away from your purpose, he's still there. You're saying, God, I'm not going to do what you asked me to do. Okay, he's still there. I 
I tried to run, I tried to hide, I tried to disobey, I tried to do everything under the sun in order to get him off of me and he was stuck. Get off me, I don't want to preach. Get off me, I don't want to pastor. Get off me, I don't want to do this. Get off me God and he's like... He's not going anywhere. And I used to feel like it was the most horrible of things. But I've learned that it is the most wonderful of things. He holds us. He walks with us. He whispers in our ear, not that way, this way. Come, come on, I have something for you. We need to understand, he is not like man. They would have killed her in a minute and would have walked away feeling good about themselves. But that's not who our Father is. That is not who our God is. You are not worthy because you are perfect. You are worthy because you are redeemed. You are worthy because you were purchased. You are worthy because you were forgiven. You are worthy because of the blood, period. There's no other explanation. There's no other currency that has enough weight to shift things in your favor. So you sit on the balance and you're up high because life is weighing it down. But Jesus just comes and steps on your weight and tilts things in your favor. I don't think you just saw that. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the negative, how many times I have been in lack, how many times I've been at the bottom, but I just showed up with my 1%. I just showed up with my 0.5%. And he said, 0.5%, I'll work with that. And he steps on my scale. Then he tips things in my favor. Then he turns it around. And I know that it was nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we have to know him. I really want you to spend some time this weekend and as my sister always says where's the lie find the lie what is the lie that keeps being repeated to you in your soul and in your emotions over and over and over again that causes you To be torn down what is that lie face it confront it stop running from it dismantle it and you know how you dismantle the lie with the truth of God the truth is she was a sinner the truth is she was worthy of being stoned the truth is she was caught in the act it wasn't a rumor the truth is she was dirty the truth is she was a whore the truth is she was sleeping with a man that was not her husband all of those things were the truth of her experience but there was a greater truth that erased the judgment it erased religion it erased the lie the lie was she will never be anything more than a whore so she deserves to die but then jesus stood
that's the same Jesus that you encountered when you said Jesus forgive me of my sin come into my life wash me clean same Jesus he's not a different Jesus he's the same he's the same one so the truth of Jesus having an encounter with this woman and telling her I do not accuse you go and sin no more do you think she ever went back to that life after coming face to face with death after coming face to face with the king of life the king of glory who pardoned her from death so that she could have a new life I promise you every joker that tried to approach her after that moment with accusations she said shut up I don't even care what you have to say the one that had no sin said I'm good so it don't matter what you think I am good it doesn't matter it doesn't matter when will you understand that it does not matter people's opinion of Joanne does not matter people's judgment of Joanne does not matter people's judgment of my past doesn't matter people's judgment of my mistakes doesn't matter because guess what none of them have a heaven or a hell to put me in none of them are my judge and all of us all of us every single last one of us we are gonna stand before God alone Ain't nobody else going to be there with me. So I cannot blame you or you or this person didn't like me or that person accused me or this person said I wasn't qualified or that person said I was this and I was that. And he's going to say, I, I don't care about any of that. What did I say to you? Well, God, no, 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 Joe, listen, what did I say? And that's, that's what I'm presenting to you tonight. What does he say to you and of you? What does he say? And if you don't know what he's saying about you in this season, this is your weekend to find out. I may lay hands on you. I might not. I don't know. But it's not contingent on whether I do or whether I don't. This is about your personal encounter with him. Amen. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. I'm done. Whew. Father, I thank you that... Um, There are some things being ripped off of us tonight. God, I know that it's going to continue into the midnight hours. I know that it's going to continue even as they dream tonight. Even as there is shifting and moving. God, I thank you, God, that, that Jesus, you will encounter these women even in the conversations that they have with one another. Jesus, that there would be encounters in their dreams. Jesus, that there would be encounters when they wake up in the morning. That there would be encounters, Father God, throughout. We have set aside this time to be reset on the inside. Because I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, Ooh, look at me. Look at me, every person in this room, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at my eyeballs. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, this weekend is so important because there is a healed you that is necessary for this moment. I'm going to say that again. There is a healed you that is necessary in the kingdom of God in this moment
you're no longer in the spirit. Hold on a second. Jesus. You know what she needs. You know what she needs. You know what she heard tonight that has caused the tears to flow. And I ask God that you would do a deep work in her heart. Healing. Healing. Every memory. Anger, pain. In the mighty name of Jesus. When a dog has been abused, look at me, I'm almost done. When a dog has been abused, a, that dog cannot even function in the most normal setting. They react and they respond to everything as if it is a threat because they are broken. But a dog that is part of a canine unit has an awareness, an understanding, a training. And even in chaos, woo, Holy Ghost, even in chaos, that animal is able to stay focused because there is a stillness. There is a training. There is a wholeness. They're not barking at everything and jumping at everything. And, and they're not running from their own shadow. But they are so self-aware. This is what God is bringing you into. He is bringing you into a season of being aware. He is bringing you into a season of being confident. He is bringing you into a season of strength. He is bringing you into a season of knowing, 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 and embracing who you are in the kingdom without apology you will no longer apologize for hearing the voice of God you will no longer apologize for being the holiest in your house you will no longer apologize for not talking the way other people around you talk you will no longer guess what you're not even going to address it you're going to just be you're no longer going to defend it He's called you to be holy, just be holy. He's called you to consecrate, just do it. He's called you to pray, just do it. He's called you to write, do it. He's called you to fast, don't even tell anybody, just do it. Just do it. Stop waiting for people around you to jump on the bandwagon so that you can feel like now you're doing the right thing. Hear God and do it. Be so settled within yourself that there can be chaos all around you. Steady. And in that steadiness, you know what's going to happen? And we're just going to keep going. now you're giving people prophetic words in grocery stores and it's accurate you're just being so father we dedicate this weekend to you this was worth every bit of sacrifice that you made to be here it is worth it Every bit of sacrifice that I had to make for you to be here, it is worth it. Because you will never be the same again in Jesus' name.